Welcome to the demo and presentation of the Bordal Gateway operating with Oracle Access Manager. In this video, you're going to see a number of scenarios of a gateway operating with Oracle Access Manager, where the gateway performs service virtualization and threat scanning, and then connects to Oracle Access Manager for performing authentication and single sign-on for client messages that are being sent to the gateway. The first scenario that we're going to look at is where the client sends a SOAP request with credentials in it form of username and password, but our gateway performs authentication using Oracle Access Manager for these requests, and then only secured requests are passed to the service. We've set up a user called Joe Trader within the Oracle Access Manager administration. Here we see Joe Trader's been set up, and there's a particular service that Joe Trader is going to try to access, slash X options, and we see if we look at that policy domain, we see there's X options which the Joe Trader is allowed to access along with one other user. Firstly, we're going to show what happens without the policy in place. Without the policy in place, we're using the Bordell Soapbox testing tool to show a message being sent directly to the service. This is before we put the authentication policy in place. Now we're going to put authentication in place. We simply drag and drop a filter within the Bordell Policy Studio under the authentication group called Username Authentication. We then choose the right role and we also put in the name, descriptive name, so that we see that in our circuit. We're doing authentication against Oracle Access Manager. We fill out the parameters for drift and validity. And then finally, what we do is we choose that we're going to use the repository, which is the Oracle Access Manager. That's how we're going to authenticate these requests. We place that onto our palette and then we wire it up with the rest of our circuit by dragging the arrows. We drag in the arrows so that authentication happens before the request is sent to the service, which is performing the put option for a particular stock. Now, when we go back to Soapbox and we try to send our message through without security, we see that it's blocked. The gateway will not allow it through because there's no W security header in place. What we have to do now is place in the W security header, which at security menu in Soapbox is very simple to do. You choose insert W security username token, you place in your credentials, the username, the password, and then once you've done that, you press finish and you see it placed inside the message. Now when we send that message through, we see that it's sent through and it passes successfully and is authenticated against our Access Manager. We can now go and look in the real-time monitoring of the Bordel Gateway and see that message going through. The first message without the username and password was blocked. The second message was allowed through. We see in the first message that was failed, we could return a 403 forbidden, for example, if we wanted to there. The second message is allowed through, and what we've done is we see that it's gone through successfully for authentication against Oracle Access Manager. Oracle Access Manager then issues a token, a single sign-on token, after it's performed authentication. That's what we're going to look at in the next scenario. What we're going to look at is how the gateway then can send that token back down to the client so that then we can present that in the next request. On our conversion, you can see we have a header created called Oracle SSO token. And what we're going to do is place that into the message. So we drag in a filter. We choose to add a header, which is the OB SSO token issued by Oracle Access Manager to clients, which is basically the single sign-on token. And that's identified by the attribute oracle.sso token within the gateway. So that's created by the filter, which does authentication against Oracle Access Manager. And it's then consumed by this particular filter, which places it into the header, which then gets passed back to the client. And then we can examine that header and then we can send it up with subsequent requests. So now once we hit deploy, what we're doing is we're deploying this changed circuit to the Bordal gateway. And now when we go back and test within Soapbox, we send the message through again, we notice something, there's an extra header added. Under the headers tab, you can see now we have the OBSSO token, which is returned to the client. This was generated by Oracle Access Manager. So for the next scenario, what we're going to do is look at using this token for single sign-on so that the client now is sending the OBSSO token up to the gateway. 
the client is not sending a username and password anymore, just the token, the gateway then is validating that token against Oracle Access Manager. If it's valid, then the request is allowed through to our web service. So we're going to make our policy a little bit more sophisticated on the Fodal side here. Within Policy Studio, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to check for the presence of that OBSSO token within the incoming message. So we're looking for the OBSSO token in the HCB header. The header name is called OBSSO. And what we're going to do if we find it is we're going to place it into an attribute called oracle.sso.token. So what we do is we place that up before we do the authentication. So if we find the token, we don't need to do authentication. But if the token is not in place, then we're going to authenticate the user, and then a new token may be created. So you can see the red path, the failure path, goes from that retrieve OBSSO token. If the token is present, if it was sent by the client, we're going to validate that against Oracle Access Manager. So we point the gateway to the connection to Oracle Access Manager, and then the gateway will validate that token against Oracle Access Manager. So we drag the green success path from that. So if it finds a token, then it calls out to Oracle Access Manager and validates that token. So in that way, clients do not have to send the username and password with every request. Instead, they can send the token. You can see graphically the workflow is quite obvious here within the way that the Vodal Policy Studio presents the circuit. Now, if we delete the username and password from our request and instead we place in the OBSSO token, then we're performing single sign-on. So the request now includes a token and we send that up to the Vodal Gateway, which is going to check for the presence of that token in the incoming message which is sent to it. We send that through and we see successfully it has passed through the gateway and we see the connection to the API. In real-time monitoring, we can see the path through the policies on the Vodal gateway. So if we look at that particular path, we see that it's green for retrieve OBSSO token, meaning the token was found in the message successfully. Also green for SSO token validation. So the message was found and it was authenticated. So now the message is successfully allowed through. If we look at a message that was blocked, um, we will see that it was not, the token was not present. So that's the overall architecture here. So what we've shown in this video is authentication and single sign-on from the Vordal gateway to Oracle Access Manager.